MashaAllah, it's 8 o'clock exactly, so we'll start. No, let me start all of this. Assalamu alaikum How is everyone? Alhamdulillah. So, um, yeah, we'll start. Bismillah. Oh, I'm supposed to put this on. So we'll begin with Dua Basmallah. A'uz billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rahman, Ya Hanan, Ya Manan, Ya Dal Jalal, Ya Al Ikram, Ya Qudus, Ya Samad, Ya Wadud. Laysa kamitlih shayun wa huwa samul basir. Ya Ahad, Ya Qahar, Ya Wasi, Ya Jabbar, Ya Mutakabir, Ya Allah. Anta al Ahad, wa lam yalid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakun lahu kufwan Ahad. Ya Qabid, Ya Basit, Ya Allah. Wallahu yan وَلَهُ يَقْبِدُ مَا وَيَبْسُطُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ يَا نَعْفِ يَا دَارِ يَا اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا نَجْوَى مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِيَحْزُنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَيْسَ بِالدَّارِهِمْ شَيْئًا إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ تَغْفَى فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ يا منتقم يا تواب يا الله ربنا واجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وارنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا رحمن رحمتك وسيد كل شيء يا رحمن أرجو لي رحمتك يا رحمن راهمين يا مؤيز يا مذل يا رحمن وتؤيز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير يا مغني يا مان يا رحمن لله ما في السماوات ولا ذي إن الله هو الغني الحميد يا أيها الناس وأنتم الفكراء إلى الله والله هو الغني الحميد يا رزاك يا مقيت يا رحمن من يشفع شفاءة حسنة يكون له نسيب منها ومن يشفع شفاءة سيئة يكون له كفل منها وكان له على كل شيء مقيتا يا فتاه يا وهاب يا رحمن فلما ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وأثابت وأثابهم فتى قريبا يا قدوس يا سام دنيا ودود كل نزل له روح القدس من ربك بالحق وليثبت الذين آمنوا هدى وبشرى للمسلمين يا أحد يا سام دنيا الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد واستغفروا ربكم ثم توبوا إليه إن ربي رحيم ودود وهو الغفور الودود ربنا إنك تحب الأفف أفوا كريما تحب الأفف أفوا أنا يا رحمة الرحيمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من قدمنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من ورائنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من فوقنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من تحتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عن أيماننا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عن شمائلنا نحن عدو إليك على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا رباه يا رحمن يا الله Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, if we can, uh, ta'ala, we'll try to finish Dua Nasiri today. But before we do that, I just wanted to complete what we did from the Quran last week. So, if you remember, we spoke about Surat Saad, Surat Qaf, and Surat Noon. And we spoke about the uh, uh, the muqatta'at so uh, Malika okay, you asked me the, the proper translation literally comes from the the idea that it is never joined those letters are not pronounced with joining so you don't say alam you say alif la mim when you mm. recite it so that means from qata like it's it's never going to be joined it's always cut <laughs> that's the literal Mm-hmm. literal Arabic but we call it the mystical letters because that doesn't really make too much sense but that's where the word comes from the muqattat um, naam. and we said there are 14 of them I think we should write down the numbers because we'll come to that later on when we start uh, Surat Maryam so let me just write that down because this is a little difficult so we start with uh, Alif, Lam, Mim, Surat Baqarah. Then we have Alif, Lam, Mim, Sad. We have Alif, Lam, Ra. Uh, we have Alif, Lam, Mim, Ra. We have Ta, 
ha uh, we have ta seen mim these are combinations we have ta with seen we have ya with seen uh, we have sad on its own we have ha and mim together we have qaf on its own uh, and it's very interesting we also have a ayn uh, uh, ayn seen qaf uh, which is unusual because this comes as the second sentence in a surah which you don't see in other places and we have noon also which is unusual because it comes as part of a sentence everything else is the beginning of the surah and alif lam mim will come six times uh, alif lam mim sad once uh, alif lam ra five times uh, oh i forgot the lo i forgot the longest one kaf ha ya ain and uh, sad this one, Surat Maryam, right? This is the longest sequence. It comes in the beginning of Surat Maryam. So Alif Lam Mim, uh, Alif Lam Ra five times, Alif Lam Mim Ra one time, uh, um, Ta Ha one time, Ta Sin Mim two times, uh, Ta Sin once, Ya Sin once, uh, sad once hamim will come seven times these hamim surahs are very beautiful the whole sequence if you read it it's always good to read the seven hamims together they are linked in in many very beautiful uh, and mystical ways kaf will come once noon comes one time as part of a sentence in surat qalam Ain seen kaf comes one time, but this is a second sentence for one of the hamims, which is interesting. And kaf ha ya ain sad comes one time, and this is for Surat Maryam. So the longest sequence comes for the 19th surah in the Quran, kaf ha ya ain sad. And the number 19 uh, has many connotations in our tradition. Uh, as your Great grandfathers will probably know. Uh, there are nineteen letters in Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That's one of the one of the one of the connotations. That, but there are many others. So we'll come back to this these numbers later on. But just write it down for now. So as you can see, noon comes once. Kaf you have here. Kaf you have there. Where's the other one? And here. And then Saad you have once, twice, and on its own, three times. Okay, so that's where you get the one, two, three. Uh, other things to note, usually Yasin and Taha are considered titles for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we say Taha, we mean Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we say Yasin, one of the meanings we say is the name of Rasulullah Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. So the most common, the most common is actually the letter Meme. Meme will come 17 times. Right? 17 times for Meme. Next comes Alif and Lam, 13 each. Then Ha, then Ra, then Ta, Sin. And we'll come to the meanings of that later. So you can... Yes, you know, Yasin? Uh, Saad. Saad. Mm. On, on the left side, we have sad, right? No, this is what I wrote last week. Oh, also one. Sorry, sorry. Oh. Once, twice, twice. once, two, and three. So we'll, we'll just note this down. Bidnillahi ta'ala, if Allah gives us tawfiq, we will come back to it. Oh, Lara is here, I think. Oh, ah. Should I move it? Yes. If it's, is it open? No. Huh? Oh, the door is locked or it's open? Yeah, yeah. Ah. Okay. Um, then, yeah, write those down and then we will very quickly go through these again because Saad, Qaf and Noon were mentioned in uh, Dua Nasiri. Oh, let me wait for... 
اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام السلام عليكم السلام ورحمة الله Okay, so we just began with a, with a summary of the with the summary of the muqatta'at and you'll notice that the singletons are these sad and kaf right and the noon is a very interesting singleton it's on its own but it comes as part of a sentence the only other two that come on their own as the beginning of the surah or sentence is sad and kaf so uh, the sad kaf and noon have a lot of uh, deeper meanings so you will see this sad qaf noon in uh, various uh, uh, various uh, prayers and uh, also i think we should write down surah 38 which is the surah 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 sad which we went through and we said there are two main stories there the story of sayyidina dawood alayhi salam and the story of sayyidina uh, Suleiman alayhi salam, so father and son. Um, and we said one of the key sentences is the 24th ayah in Surah uh, Sad, right? Which ends with the word uh, Inaba or Anaba, right? So returning. So, uh, so that comes to, I erase the rest, but the seven, the seven, uh, words of the Quran, the seven words that Allah actually says he loves, so which is one of them is Tawbah. So I'll just read that ayah again. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qala laqad dhalamaka bi su'ali na'ajatika ila ni'ajih wa inna kathiran minal من الخلطاء لا يبغي بعضهم على بعض إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وقليل معهم وذن داود أن أنما فتناه فاستغفر ربه وخر راقعا وأنابا and this is an ayah of sajda this is an ayah of prostration so this ayah ends with inaba reversion right so to refresh our memory this is the story of the two petitioners who came into Dawud alayhi salam's quarters and they had this case. And if you judge it from the external appearances of the story, Dawud alayhi salam did the right thing. One had 99 ewes, one had one. So the one who had 99 wanted the other one. So that, this fellow said, that's not fair. So Dawud alayhi salam, immediate reaction, he judged it on the external. And then as soon as he did that, he realized he had been tested. And his mistake uh, as a prophet of God, as a Vajal, is that he didn't check in with his Lord before replying. Had he checked in, he would have known uh, these are not normal human beings. These are two people sent to test me uh, because uh, Obviously, they disappeared as soon as this happened. And then he realized this is a miraculous occurrence. And he made ruku and he made istighfar. And uh, he reverted back to Allah. So that is inaba, reversion, right? It's one of the two words of tawbah. And Allah says after that, فَأَفَرْنَا لَهُ ذَلِكْ So we, we, we forgive him about this. وَإِنَّ لَهُ عِنْدَنَا لَزُلْفَ وَخُسْنَا مَعَابِ which is very su sweet, then Allah says, and f he, then he became with us, aindana, meaning with us, very, zulfa is very close, like proximity, someone who is very precious to you. So Allah Azza tested him with a very high test. This is not an easy test to pass, because anyone who looks at this will say, he did the right thing. But Allah, for people he wants to bring close to him, he will start testing you in more and more refined ways and this is why he says we brought to him with this aindana la zulfa with us to a close proximity so some he became someone very precious to Allah and he had an excellent place of return right and then we have so that is ayah uh, 24 and 25 surah 38 
And then we have the story of Sulaiman alayhi salam, where again he was tested with the fine things in life. And he actually forgot because he was admiring these, these fine horses so much. He forgot his time of dhikr and immediately he also made tawbah. Uh, and the ayah where the same, uh, the same words come, is ayah 34 of surah 38 which you should write down laqad fatanna sulaiman wa alqayna ala kursiyihi jasadan thumma anaba so we tried sulaiman and we put on his chair a lifeless body and then he he returned and he, that was his reversion his reversion but the important thing is that this is ayah 34 ayah 35 uh, no, that is ayah 34. But again, and then he said, Kale Rabia Firali, Wahabali, Mulkan, Layan Bari, Li Ahadin, Min Baadi, Inaka Antal Wahab. And he said, Oh my Lord, forgive me. His response was also immediately for asking for forgiveness. And then he said, Give something to me that no one else will ever get after me. So this is his knowledge of Allah's uh, way. So when you know how Allah deals with creation, you know how to respond. So one of the things Rabbana does is, if when he loves you, he will put in front of you more and more subtle and refined means for you to come closer to him. And they require a great deal of presence to know how best to respond. So he understood that in this, he had also been tested. And he understood when he made his istighfar, right? He made the wrong decision, but he made, he made tawbah, right? He asked for forgiveness. And he understood that that is all Allah wants. We, we are not going to do the right thing all the time. But if you do the wrong thing, we make tawbah immediately. And then he knew, oh, he's going to be in a place of closeness. I'm going to ask. I want a kingdom that no one else will have like it after me. So this is someone who knows their Lord. This is Allah. When you do something that Allah is pleased with, you ask. Uh, this is what we call, we call that a time of uh, expansion. When you feel an expansion in your heart, which you will feel when you are brought close to Allah, you will either feel constriction because you are afraid of Allah's majesty, or you will feel expansion because Allah's love will be showered upon you and your heart will expand. You shouldn't waste those opportunities, you must ask. So he asked and he was given immediately these next ayahs. I have made the wind your servant. I have made the shayateen and the jinn your servants. I have done this and this and this and this for you. And we know of the great kingdom of Sulaiman al-Islam. No one had a kingdom like it after him. And then also the same ayah comes again. Allah says, "Hada ata ona famnun au amsika bi gairi hisab." This is our gift. So give or hold back without reckoning. Bi gairi hisab. So this is how I gift. No calculation, no accounting, no limits. I can give without any uh, any holding back. So, Sayyidina Sayyidatuna Maryam alayhi salam. We will come to that Surat Al Imran and also Surat Maryam. She teaches Sayyidina Zakaria how to ask dua. Remember when, when Zakaria would come into her room and she would always have fresh food in front of her, fruits out of season, beautiful food. She would ask, he would ask Sayyidina Maryam salam, how do you get this? And she replied, Allah gives to whom he chooses, bi ghairi hisab, without reckoning, without calculating. So you ask, this is your Lord, you have a closeness, you ask, Allah will feel more happy to give. So this is the state of our Lord. So this is why one of the reasons we want to be closer to our Lord, to taste that sweetness of being looked after by the divine. Hmm? Allah loves to give for those he chooses. And then he says, so we give us this gift without reckoning. Same sentence. Because, and truly for him in our presence, uh, is a station of proximity, that same closeness, and an excellent place of return. So this means 
their home in the hereafter is also very close to Allah. Hmm? Subhanallah. So, Surah 38. Uh, can somebody read the last three ayats of Surah 38? Can you read? We'll, we'll finish that. Then we'll finish Surah the English. Thirty-eight, eighty-six to eighty-eight. Can you read, Leander? Page four, four, five. So the last three, now. Yeah. Mm. Eighty-six to eighty-eight. Yeah. Say, O Muhammad. I do not ask you for any reward, for if nor am I of those who take it upon themselves. Mm. It is but a remembrance for the words. Mm. And you will surely come to know its ascertained means after a little while. Mm. So here, as Rasulullah is all the prophets say, I don't want any reward from anybody. I am fulfilling my duty to Allah, what he has called upon me to do, I have done. Uh, and it is just to remind you. And you are only reminded of what you used to know. This is not a new teaching, it is a reminder, right? So that sentence comes, In huwa illa dhikrul lil alameen. And also Surat Saad, if you remember last week, we talked about it. It begins, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Saad wal Qur'ani dil dhikr, by the Qur'an. With or of the the possessor of of uh, reminders or remembrance, right? So then we go to Surat Qaf, which is the fiftieth uh, surah. So there are two ayats there. I want you to write down. Uh, ah, so I, some of these ayat they are sort of anchors for the surah. The meaning of it. Uh, I will anchor the, the, the breadth of the the, uh, the surah. So one is uh, the eighth verse here. Somebody can read Malikaka, so the eighth ayah of Surat Qaf, which is the 50th surah. I, I, I need to know the Roman for 50. 50 is L. L. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. L. 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 Eight. Now. Eight. Mm. Okay. So again, uh, to be a clear sign, Vadikra and a vicar, a reminder for every slave, Abdin Munib. Abd is slave. Munib, who is in a state of Tauba, who is in a state of Ainaba. Munib comes from Inaba. So who is in a state of being reverted? Meaning you are, your heart is with Allah. You are not facing externally. You are facing internally, right? Uh, and then also, hmm. ah, Ayah 53 and 54. Can, can you read 53 and 54? Of, of 50? Naam. 50? Ah, sorry, ah, sorry, 33 and 34, Naam. 33 and 34. Man hmm. hashir rahman bil ghaydi waja bi kalbi Mm. So the English thirty three. 
So here, and we talked about Surat Qaf the week. That's a very heavy surah, very full of things to come. Mm -hmm. um, and Allah says, Ayah 33, Who fears Man Khashia Rahman? And here He calls Himself by His name, Ar Rahman. Man Khashia. Khashia fear is a. It's hard to translate. Khashia is to have reverence or to be in awe. The type of awe that makes you afraid. Not the type of awe out of like being in front of a tyrant. But the type of awe in, when you're, you're in this presence of majesty, you, you feel afraid. right? Khashia Rahman. From the unseen, Bil Ghaibi. Hmm? So you have awe for Allah, for what is in the unseen. Because Sayyidina Dawood, salam, he forgot that. That was his mistake. Right? He didn't think of the unseen meaning of what was put in front of him. And so Allah is reminding of that. Man khashya rahman bil ghaibi wa jaa bi qalbil munib And comes with a qalb, a heart, munib, that is in reversion. That is with Allah. This, uh, this ayah, something very similar, comes one more time in the Quran in Surah Yasin. So if you go to Yasin, I will go to Yasin. So 36, we are in 38. So if you go to 36, Ayah, ayah 11. Hmm. And we came to, we talked about Yasin last week also about the pattern. Hmm. Can you read? Mm. A very similar ayah comes in Surat Mulk. Surat Yasin and Mulk are pairs. We can go into that later. But these words in this format, Wahashya Rahmana Bil Ghaibi, comes only here in Yasin and Surat Qaf, right? The two places, Man Khashya Rahmana Bil Ghaibi. The one who has reverent awe for Rahman in what is unapparent. And he says, Allah says, you can only warn, warn the one, someone can read the English, it's better? Yeah. You can only warn the one who, who follows the remembrance and gives to Allah mercifully from the unseen. Mm. So hidden glad tidings of forgiveness and most precious ah. So Allah is saying you can only warn somebody who has dhikr. Inama tundiru dhikr. Because the one who has dhikr is in a state of they remember, right? When they remember, uh, they are connected to uh, many things that are not apparent. So you can warn such a person who has dhikr. And and Wahashia Rahmana Bil Ghaibi. Right? They will take this warning seriously. Other people will not. It's harder for them. Wahashia Rahmana Bil Ghaibi. Same same phrase. Wahashia Rahmana Bil Ghaibi that came in Surat Qaf. So these are the two places in the Quran this will come. And he says, Vabashir hu bima afiratan wajrin karim, and give them the good news, Vabashir hu bima afiratan of forgiveness, and a reward that is noble. So, this is the same thing that Sayyidina Dawood was given the good news of forgiveness and a noble reward, proximity to Allah. Same thing, Sayyidina Sulaiman. He had the good news of many, many things in the world which he asked for. We must learn from him to ask. Some of us are shy to ask, subhanAllah. The prophets teach us how to behave with Allah. And he had also zulfa, closeness in the hereafter. Both of these things Allah gave. And just because Allah gave in the dunya, he didn't stop what he's going to give in the akhirah. So this is Allah's way of giving. We can give. When we give, we generally calculate somewhere, right? 
Allah's bi ghairi hisab subhanallah so this ayah is a sort of a it uh, it links links these these two and again uh, and here when we go back to surah qaf we go to 33 man khashiya rahman bil ghaib wa jaa bi qalb salim the next ayah 34 can someone read read 34 If I'm going too fast, let me know if it's a bit too now. Or oh, 50 of Surah Qaf. Hmm. 34, okay. Hmm. Udukhuluha bi salamin dalika yawmun kum. Page 507. Udukhuluha bi salamin. Hmm. Dalika yawmun khulud. You want to read it, Rehmat? Yes. It's very short. Mm. Ah. Ah. Now. Right. So, do khulah bil salam. Come inside with peace. The alikal yom. I don't know if you remember, but when you read this, you remember the what Allah said to Sayyidina Ibrahim. And he said, "The only one who is going to be safe on that day is the one who comes with qalb salim." Uh, we'll maybe we'll talk about that next week, inshallah. And Allah says, "On that day, the only one who will be safe who comes with no qalb salim." And qalb salim here is being linked to qalb al munib, the heart that is in reversion. So here, from these two ayat, thirty-three and thirty-four, we get the two meaning, the two. Sub words of Tauba, so you should write that down. Surat Qaf, thirty-three and thirty-four. This is how we get that Tauba is composed of Inaba and Taslim. It's one of the one of the places in the Quran where this is clear. Inshallah, there are other places too. Be barakatillah, subhanallah. And this is one of the seven words, right? Tauba is composed of Inaba or Taslim. So then we will finish with Surat Qalam, which begins with the letter Noon. So that is the sixty-eighth, sixty-eighth surah in the Quran. And we read this whole one, sixty, sixty-eight, five hundred and sixty, page five hundred and sixty. Okay, and we talked about the story of. Uh, Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam and uh, he also taught us the great the great dua of tauba la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minaz zalimin right we talked about that story because Allah in this in this uh, we won't go through it again because we did it before but he uh, he says don't be like Sayyidina Yunus when he made this mistake right Don't get impatient with my decree. My decree takes time, but I am time. You know that hadith, no? Very famous hadith. Say never complain about time, because I am time. Allah says, "Ana, I am time." So that's another mystery. We don't understand what that concept means because we are all in the fold of time, controlled by time, regulated by time, cannot escape time. So Allah says, "I am time. Don't, don't. I am time. Don't complain." My decree will unfold as and when and how I please. So, right? so when you complain about time, you are complaining against me. Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salam made that mistake. He got very impatient with his people and he ran away. And then he was brought back by Allah's very mystical or strange or mesmerizing ways of correcting us. Subhanallah with this. Being swallowed by the fish, and then he made this dua: "La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al zalimin." And he was, he was, he was forgiven. But Allah says, "Don't be like that." And then He says, uh, uh, "This surah will finish with the ayah." If you if you read the uh, the last ayah, can someone read the last ayah of Surah Qalam? Hmm. Oh, 
And the English? But it is nothing except a remembrance for the world. Ah, so we're coming back to remembrance, right? So we talked about Surat uh, Asad and Qaf that began with remembrance and had remembrance inside it. Uh, uh, Surat uh, Qaf, uh, the eighth ayah, I think I mentioned that. Um, and then Surat Noon comes back to that again. This is nothing except a remembrance to the world. And Allah will say this over and over and over and over again. Okay? So we, re we always remind ourselves. So, so there are some themes that seem to come out in these surahs. One is, can anyone from, from what we've been discussing? One is? Remember. Remembrance. Right? Second one is? This one, right? Tawbah with Inaba, Inaba and Taslim. So these are um, some of the things we understand from Besad, Vikaf, Avinun. So, and there are more, but we'll come to that later on, inshallah. Mm. Um, okay, so we can go on with uh, Dua and Nasiri. So this is page 8. وَجَلْ بِسَادٍ وَبِقَافٍ وَبِنُونَ أَلْفَ, بي ألف حِجَابٍ مِنْ وَرَائِهَا يَكُونَ right? uh, Place a thousand veils in front of it. And then he's, so he's saying, accept my dua by this and this and this. So he's call, calling upon these great meanings in the Quran, right? The inaba of the great prophets and the state of having a a heart that is in reversion and therefore being in proximity to Allah and a state of being in peace. And then he says, uh, by the rank of the light of your noble face and the rank of the secret of your immense kingdom and the rank of la ilaha illallah and the rank of the best of creation, O our Lord, right? So these things I cannot explain. The rank of Allah's face, who knows that, subhanAllah. Abu Jahi Siri Mulkikal Azim and the rank of your great kingdom. Wajahi la ilaha illallah. What does la ilaha illallah really mean? SubhanAllah. We can talk for hours and hours and hours about La ilaha illallah and write books and books and books, subhanAllah. What is the meaning of? This phrase, La ilaha illallah. Wajahi khayril khalki ya rabbahu. And the rank of the best of creation, who is? The best of creation? Who is the best of creation? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahih. Wajahi ma bihi da akal anbiya. Wajahi ma bihi da akal awliya. And the rank of that by which the prophets prayed to you. And we have in these stories from Saad, Qaf and Noon had a glimpse of the prayer of the Anbiya. How they make dua to Allah. They make dua knowing Allah at a very high level. So we must learn from them. And the prayers of the Awliya. The prayers of the Awliya are not like you know, the common people's prayers. They pray in ways uh, that are befitting what they know of Allah. Wajahi qadril qutubi wal awtadi wajahi halil jarsi wal afradi wajahi al akhyari wajahi nujaba wajahi al abdali wajahi nukaba. Naam. So these these uh, these two stanzas or these two verses. Does anyone know in what any of these me words mean? Firstly, Wajahil, Wajahi Qadril Qutbi. Maybe someone should read the English because I'm, I'm not uh, going. Can you read the last two? The English of the last two? Mm. In the rank of the power of the Quds of the Awtad, mm -hmm. in the rank of the Jars and Afrod, mm -hmm. 
Okay, who is familiar with these words? Does anyone know what they mean? Huh? No? Uh huh. Uh, it comes in um, Fir'aun Zil Autad. I am pretty sure 